Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Mayank Madden from Lemongrass. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Maya Madden, the head of data and analytics at Lemongrass. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Maya, hello and welcome. Hello, Shannon. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing great. Thank you. Awesome. So tell me, okay, so you're the head of data and analytics at Lemongrass. So tell me, what is... What is the business of Lemongrass? What, is, what does Lemongrass do? So Lemongrass is a software-enabled service provider, mainly focused on uh, four key services. Uh, to start with, uh, we migrate uh, SAP from on-prem to cloud. Uh, second is uh, uh, security operations, SecOps. Uh, third is FinOps, finance operations. And fourth is data analytics. Now, if I say our core business is uh, basically migrating uh, uh, SAP from uh, on-prem onto cloud, uh, we started by doing it on AWS. We are one of the uh, premier partners and first uh, uh, in the cloud, you know, who actually uh, did a migration onto, uh, onto cloud for SAPs. And uh, 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 since then, now we have built partnership with all, all cloud providers. Oh, that's exciting. So those are major undertakings, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. as you know, you know, SAP is kind of a business critical application, enterprise application for major enterprises. So mm -hmm. this is uh, the way to modernize and, you know, get into the modern uh, enterprise. So one of the key element which all of the our customers uh, are looking for is how to basically get onto the cloud. How do we migrate this business critical application on cloud? Oh, that's very exciting. So as the head of data analytics, what do you do for Lemongrass? What's your typical work week look like? So um, as a head of data analytics, my focus is specifically how to generate value from data. So understanding uh, data challenges customers are having with respect to how do they use uh, data from business, which is SAP data, along with uh, and combining with external data sources, which may not be uh, business. Yeah? For example, uh, weather data uh, or uh, trending data. So you can say that what's the current trend in UK, right? And how do we combine that to, for example, understand buying patterns uh, in a particular region? So my, my focus is you know, to work with uh, customers, understand what challenges they have in terms of integrating these data sources together, what kind of reference architecture uh, they build onto cloud in a cloud native manner or, and then uh, how do they analyze this data together what are the kind of use cases they have so these are a few things what uh, what i do as part of my role and my week uh, mostly is basically interacting with uh, different customers majorly cios ctos um, head of sap head of data analytics to understand uh, the kind of problems they have the kind of use cases they are working on going through that and uh, working through also technical a little bit on you know what what does the enterprise architecture look like what their strategy and roadmap is for data very nice so you work a lot with data yourself Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a lot. Yeah. Really well, we'll get into that a little bit more, but uh, for right now, so let me ask you, is this what you wanted to be when you grew up? Is this the dream? Like when you were six, <laughs> you know, to say, I want to be the head of data and analytics. 
Uh, that that is a question I I would say no <laughs> to start with <laughs> because you know uh, I I come from a, a very small town in India center of uh, India uh, where I grew up and at that time I was not aware of anything in what I need to do and being an elder of the eldest of the family you know a joint family uh, I was you know like uh, thinking of doing anything which you know was you know presenting itself to me you know becoming an actor or doing something or you know becoming an engineer yeah so engineering is pa part of something what I was looking for but uh, definitely you know I haven't thought of you know becoming and going into data analytics <laughs> so well then tell me so as you started growing up and and developing your passions you know what started leading you where did you go um as you got older and started choosing your schooling and things like that that's, that's again a good question it's a journey actually uh you know so uh my town you know i didn't have uh, any studies uh, after gcsc or what we say is after 10th so i had to move out of my town go to a city to you know study more um, and uh, there you know because you, as you move to city you meet new people you you basically interact and, and get to know okay there are options available and that's when you know in 1990 uh, eight, you know, uh, I started doing that, exploring a little bit more, you know, getting that a little bit of mentorship from friends, okay, after talking to them. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I get into, uh, got into engineering and I chose uh, computer technology. Uh, so I did my engineering there. Uh, I was campus selected. I joined a company service provider, uh, very well known Tech Mahindra. Uh, and that was the kind of foundation, you know, when I started interacting and actually working in computers and data. So um, starting with database developer. Oh, very nice. So you got into data just right away. Yeah. So, so tell me more about that job and where you progressed from there. Yeah. So uh, when when I joined uh, uh, Tech Mahindra, there was no cloud. Okay. At that time, mm -hmm. uh, it was 2003, 2002, I'm talking about. Uh, there was no cloud. Uh, and the information available on the internet was also not that much, right? So it was on your own and with the training uh, program, you need to learn. So um, I started working on um, Oracle databases, you know, operational systems to start with. And as I started working in, I my interest grew in terms of that, you know, how these companies use the, this data. Operational element is one thing, okay, to get things done uh, as a service, for example. But how do they collect this data? How do they store this data? And uh, how do they analyze history? So I was working for uh, uh, British Telecom uh, as a client, and uh, they have this 21th century network program, you know, rollout of fiber and everything going on at that time. And uh, I got a chance to work on uh, that. How do we basically do forecasting for these network equipments capacity? Okay. Uh, so I kind of led that uh, team uh, of uh, data and BI to start with business intelligence. And uh, that was my journey to start on actually data analytics. But that was purely uh, structured data, what we call in today's world, you know, in relational sure. database term. Yeah. Uh, from from there, uh, as I grew, um, I moved on to okay get more exposure into consulting. So I joined Capgemini, uh, where mm -hmm. I was a consultant working for retail and government uh, clients, uh, where uh, I got a chance to you know focus more on industry, right? So going through a retail. Uh, data model going through that you know how uh, the store operates and, and, and analyzing data at scale but again you know uh, at that time the challenge was that how do we analyze data at scale because again people were not moving to cloud at that time all the systems were on-prem right uh, uh, that was a turning point again uh, wherein I realized, okay, there are new things coming up. And at that time, big data was getting popular. And I'm talking about uh, year 2013, 2012, 2013. Uh, uh, one of the things what I have uh, have done is, you know, as I see and uh, the new technology evolution, I try to do hands-on. So um, working for a customer, uh, me and one of my colleague realized that this is a data problem we need to solve at scale. We can't solve on databases, so why don't we do some pilot and POC 
on Hadoop platform, which is, you know, let's do a big data platform and demonstrate to customer. And that's where, you know, I started learning and, you know, doing things on big data, you know, combining mm-hmm. other data sets together and unstructured data together. Uh, and then I joined a, a company called Hortonworks, which is which was a pioneer and uh, you know, of Hadoop uh, as an architect, and uh, later grew in Hortonworks to become professional services director, working with uh, customers across Europe, Middle East, and Africa, uh, uh, focusing on uh, delivering uh, big data platforms and uh, realizing the value from unstructured data. Uh, mm-hmm. So. Uh, so I, I think it, it's a long journey. Uh, 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 after that, uh, continued in uh, big data, joined Virtual Stream for as a cloud provider, and later on I worked for an AI company as well. Where uh, how do we leverage um, uh, videos and images and analyze uh, videos and images? So it's unstructured data. So it's a, a fifteen journey in short, uh, fifteen years of uh, journey in in yeah. short. You know how I grew and got an opportunity, but I have kind of experimented, evolved from there, learned from there, and then went on. Oh, I love that. And and is that when you um, moved to uh, lemongrass? After yes. That? Yeah. Yes. So lemongrass is an interesting opportunity, frankly, you know, uh, uh, why why so? Uh, because uh, as I said, you know, one of the key systems customers have is ERP, business critical systems. And not all of, you know, I think more than 50% systems are still on-prem. They're not on cloud. They So those customers are struggling to innovate and get the uh, flexibility, innovation, scalability of cloud not realized for them yet, right? Uh, not only that, so that's not my core area of, you know, migration, you know, that um, uh, uh, other core team looks at. But my uh, role uh, came in as, okay, how do we realize? Because one part would be let them migrate on here. But second is how do you innovate from there? How do you mm-hmm. combine business data with non-business data in a, in a uh, proven architecture and apply latest technologies and tools, uh, an open data ecosystem and tools? For example, now Gen AI is popular. So how can I use it? Uh, of course, uh, right now, uh, I can't say yes or no, but it really depends on the use case. And that's how, you know, I work with customer in understanding their problem, what they have, and accordingly apply uh, kind of other uh, tech, uh, other uh, techniques to solve it. So in, in short, if, if you say it, it's a great opportunity because uh, all enterprises have got ERP system and they want to migrate it and they want to innovate from there. They are looking forward to, you know, merge business data and non-business data together. And uh, it, it the opportunity came in at the right time. And I thought, I think this is a great opportunity to get into the lemongrass. That's exciting. And, and Monk, it sounds like you've been chasing a lot of the new uh, techs. You mentioned innovation um, as a word in there many times. Um, and, you know, you became a data architect. And how, as you were expanding and going through your career, you know, how did you learn these skills? And, you know, um, how did you gain these skills? Was it just through experience? And, and you know, where did you get the training and, and to to continue to pursue these uh, advanced technologies? Right. So um, um, I, w- I would divide it into two, three points, right? So uh, first is to always, always uh, be uh, up, up to date on the trends which are coming in it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it, right? Because sometimes it could be a hype, but you need to experiment it, right? And you can do experimentation with current technologies and tools in the market. You can experiment it very quickly. You can fail fast. So that is something what I do is, you know, uh, and whatever foundation I have built uh, in my career, you know, starting with basics, right? Uh, Learning SQLs, right? Playing with data, uh, playing with uh, structured data, that really helps. So if combining that, you know, foundational data element with uh, awareness in the market, what is coming in and, you know, actually doing a little bit of hands-on, right? So at my role, I try, you know, if I could do a little bit of hands-on as well, right? Because unless until you do a little bit of hands-on, you don't get that confidence, even though, you know, you have that experience working on different kind of architecture, but if it is, there's a new technology, even if you do few things, I think you, you know that, you know, it works and then you can confidently talk to your customers. That is something what what I look for uh, to do. And 
Third is uh, um, um, having people around, you know, which are uh, experts. So training is something you can now get it online, right? So you go on YouTube, you go on Coursera. There are so many, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, training portals available. You can go and uh, um, uh, get your, yourself trained. So um, that is, that is, I think, two, three points I would say uh, people should be doing. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. So that's fantastic. And so, um, and so what has been your biggest lesson so far in your career? Right. Uh, biggest lessons uh, so far, uh, I would say, uh, would be uh, people, you know, mm. keeping uh, people and keeping mentors around, right? Mm -hmm. That is that is one of the key things, right? As you grow into different roles, okay, it is important that, you know, you may learn uh, the technology you may learn to do the things but what we are we just interact with people even if we talk to uh, our, our customers it they are just people so how do we communicate things how do we articulate things i look forward to my bosses when they speak when they talk i look forward to my old mentors my friends you know i always go to them and it's not only uh, the business problems you go to sometimes we are human being right you may have some problem going on and you need somebody to talk to so my biggest lesson which i realized later uh, on you know after 10 years of my career is to be open and go and uh, talk to uh, the you, you need to have a coach you need to have a mentor in your life uh, which can provide you you know guidance at uh, right time uh, and and that would be really really helpful uh, to grow your career okay. that is such a good lesson and one I can totally relate to <laughs> you know yeah. trying to do it so hard for so long by myself it's just not possible yeah. you need the community yeah yes, yeah exactly Exactly. Oh, I love it. So, you know, um, having worked with data since really since the onset of your career, what is your definition of data? So data to me is any information, right? May it be a personal information, business information, where which you can uh, securely store. Now I'm, I'm calling this jargon securely stored because in current world where we are geographically distributed, there are different compliances, different regulations, right? Even for the personal data, right? Securely store and analyze. Analyze in the sense, you know, combine with each other or probably, you know, as it is, you can retrieve and access that data. Okay, so that is that is a data basic definition to me. And now that data could be um, uh, numbers or facts, uh, could be some information about customer, could be anything. You know, I, I'll give you, I, I normally give classy examples like uh, my gardener, he is still old school. When he comes in, he has a small diary he comes with and he notes down uh, the schedule, right? Okay, I'm going here next. Okay, so I ask for next appointment. He notes down, okay, I'll come on this day. He still maintains that. And whenever he needs to call a customer, he opens it, he finds out the number and call it, right? And it's secured in his pocket. It's with him. Right. So this is a basic example, but, you know, moving that to now cloud terms and all, you can correlate that, you know, you need to have that. And how do you govern it? You know, so all these, you know, uh, uh, principles uh, come into picture. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that comparison is it's very, very good. Uh, <laughs> it's still data, right? Even handwritten, right. it's right. still data. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, and having worked again with data for, for quite a while and, and leading a company now in data and analytics, you know, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Uh, that's, that's, that's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, I would say definitely increasing. Now, mm -hmm. there are various factors to it, right? And uh, we are in a so fast-paced world now that every day there is a new company coming up on how do how can they leverage data how can they uh, uh, you know kind of analyze data how can they apply gen ai and all why why all these things happening why our companies so or new companies are coming up you know it's because of explosion of data explosion of data is not only you know uh, 
that you know now business data is moving to cloud it is all about 5g is being rolled out now people are thinking about 6g uh advancement in uh gpus you know like companies like nvidia is focused on uh, quantum computing is coming in right so all this advancement is making it possible what was not possible before now when there is a possibility to do things better it requires a lot and lot of data to be combined and analyzed. And that's why, you know, Gen AI, which are, which is, you know, created or the models, the foundational models or LLMs are created uh, based on billions of parameters and days and months of computing, you know, or model training, it, it, it is now possible, but it requires a lot of, lot of data. And now uh, I see uh, because of uh, the Gen AI, we'll see how it basically applies to different industries. Uh, but uh, I'll see that more jobs uh, will come in sectors like data engineering, uh, data analytics, uh, machine learning. And the new one would be now, you know, what we are calling it as a prompt engineering or how do we leverage uh, generative AI uh, in, in the industries and businesses. Uh, I was, you know, I, I was looking at the news uh, day before and Apple has now, uh, you know, uh, committed to invest $1 billion in Gen AI. And my view is, you know, if companies like Apple is investing, that means it's going to impact your daily lives as well. So, so it is, it is not only business we are talking about now, it is going to impact uh, your daily lives as well. So I definitely see that, you know, um, that there will be a lot of, lot of more jobs, but alongside there will be a lot of automation. There'll be a lot of, uh, you know, robotics, which will come into picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very true. Yeah. It's, it's a, a shift, right? In, sure. in, Next yeah. industry revolution yeah. we're talking about, yeah. Yeah, and we've seen so much, you know, the uh, as companies try to stand up all these this cool new tech, they realize they also need to to invest in headcount, which uh, manages data governance and quality, and yeah. and and the prep of the data. Exactly, exactly. That becomes yeah. crucial, you know, and very very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So then, you know, especially you've given some great advice already, you know, um, but as for especially for anybody who's just now just starting to look for a career in data and consider that possibility, especially as data has become a mainstream topic. What's your advice for somebody getting into data? So uh, my advice would be that uh, to learn the foundation of data, you know, uh, data principles to start with, you know, like I gave an example of how do you store data, analyze and process data? How do you apply governance and security? The basic principles, get on to learn basics uh, like Excel, you know, that's a very good way to learn analytics, right? Even, you know, by using macros and formulas, you get to learn more, right? Uh, learn SQL right which is the foundation of you know structured data you know a lot of uh, new also uh, companies which are coming in you know you can use ncsql to you know um, uh, query business data so these are you know some foundational things which you should be doing apart from get your hands dirty you need to do it you know without doing it without doing a lot of lot of reading uh, it is not going to happen right you know you if you see that okay you'll go on a project and then start doing it don't wait for it you know people who are already doing uh, in the university they need to build something and it is so easy to do it these days you can log on to cloud cloud provides free tier you can just do experimentation there so, so get your hands dirty. Uh, I, I would say get hands-on experience at very early uh, stage of your career. Oh, such great advice. And like you say, there's so many different places to, to uh, achieve that possibility. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Learning is like very easy these days, right? It is just yeah. that uh, how do you uh, learn and what to learn? And that's where your mentors and coach, you know, comes into play. So you can, you know, kind of uh, structure your uh, career path, you know, from 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 early. Yeah, it's so important. You know, it's it's funny too. We've been talking a lot about that here, you know, at Data Versity, taking the time to learn, not just do the work and get the work done, but taking the time to learn so that we can also progress to the next step, right? Like exactly. if we if we're not growing ourselves, then then we can't grow the company, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Mark, and and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask if people wanted to learn more about lemongrass, where would they go? 
so uh, they can reach out to uh, us uh, like uh, they can reach out to uh, for, first of all they can go and uh, understand you know our services on our website uh, they can reach out to me they can reach out to bo any of uh, uh, you know uh, our team uh, and we provide details of our offices and our contacts on on the website as well uh, we are doing loads and loads of events okay uh, like sap insider we go to aws reinvent we go to google next we go to you know events with microsoft our partners right so we can meet there we are meeting our customers and uh, our, uh, our prospects and uh, there as well and uh, talking about our services uh, you can contact us and you know uh, arrange a workshop with us where we talk about in detail uh, and we have got a great references of uh, tier one customers okay we have done thousands of you know sap migration uh, sap systems migrations okay we are expert in that so we can you know talk through about all of it and required you know we can provide references oh perfect and what's the url for your website uh it's lemongrasscloud.com perfect well, and we will post that link uh, and to the podcast as well, so y'all can get that information. Well, Maya, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you and and hear about your journey. Uh, likewise, and uh, really, really looking forward to you know be working uh, sometime uh, uh, next time as well, uh, and talk about you know how the uh, trends are going in data and how the things are changing in the world. Oh, I love that. I really look forward to that too. Mayank, well, thank you so much again for taking the time to chat with us today. Yeah, thank you. Yes. And for all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest in podcasts and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.